Hey, um, so today, wow, we'll go for the I beam. I'm going to um, replicate this project I saw on the internet. Uh, this guy made a uh, uh, router jig uh, using uh, these uh, Porter cable, uh, like laminate or palm routers, I think. DeWalt, I think, owns Porter cable. So the DeWalt has a similar um, uh, anatomy form factor so it will actually work if you can get your hands on that also so I'm gonna use a port -a cable uh, router today I got it on, on um, Facebook marketplace uh, and uh, they're actually they're very common on, on the, uh, as a resale item so it should be hard to find them wherever you are but you need it because of its diameter and I'll explain some more to you as we dive a little deeper into this project but hey listen I'm happy to be here with you Let's get started, shall we? In the name of uh, reuse and recycle, I have the I have this like scrap scrap pieces of wood from other projects. I thought about using this, but um, the diameter that I need to cut out of this is uh, two and a half inches. That that leaves me very little on the side. So what I decided to do. Um, was to take two of these, glue them together, and that's going to give me a wider diameter, as you can see. I'm sorry, a wider area to uh, actually work with. So that's what I'm going to do. And um, yeah, yeah, you got that? Great. Uh, I want to show you the router now. The router that I got is this laminate router. Now, I was actually going to make a video on how to rebuild this thing. It's a cool little, cool little tool. Um, uh, so I bought this online, and the gentleman had passed away, and his wife was selling it. So you know, I do feel kind of some kind of way about it because I'm not a big fan of mortality. Anyway. Um, what I have here is a broken uh, top, and I ordered this top, so before we proceed, let's actually take this top and, um, yeah, put it put it on, see if we can get, uh, we have a good shape, because we're going to need to get some other screws, too, and those screws have uh, certain di dimensions, and we're going to show you how to get them. The body of the router, see this? diameter right here. This is really important. It tapers a little bit as it goes um, this way, I think. Yeah, as it goes this way. It tapers just a little bit, but just enough, right, that by the time you can get, like, your 2x4 on here, something that looks like this, right, you cut out that hole, it'll actually stop. And if it doesn't stop right there, it'll stop right here at those lips. So that gives it the ability to float, which is what we want. And that will allow us to like create a, a top for it. That's why the person used that in the video, but they didn't explain it to you. I'm, I'm actually going to explain it to you. The next reason why they used this router, this diameter right here, it's it's a circle. You know, it's a full-on circle minus that little part there, but it's a full-on circle. And I'll show you. Uh, I get. I'll show you the uh, the dimensions of that. One second. Now you don't have to do it with this, you can just take the screw with you and uh, you know, try to match it up, but I want to be a little bit more thorough, I want to show you um, exactly how to use these tools, because if you can apply them later on for other things, you know. Alright, so I'm just trying to match the, the teeth up with this, that's still too large. And all I'm doing, I'm going to go down in size, so that's 20. Um, let's see. 24, that's 24 more teeth per inch. That's what those numbers mean. Let's get in a little closer. Nope, let's go to 27. about 28 
Hope you can see this. I'm not wasting your time or mine. Ah, 28's looking good. Oops. Almost there. No. Uh, let's try 32. So the numbers represent how many teeth are. There you go. 32 is a perfect match. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that sits in there perfectly. Okay. And so what we would do, right, is. Uh, can we get a little closer? Let's see if we can get a little closer now. Blurring everything out. Kind of looks pretty good. So it's. This is 32 teeth per inches. Per inch. And that lines up quite well with with this so you can see it oh that's tricky you can see that so that's how you use this gauge all right so now that i know that i uh have Kind of cut myself all while I was talking. Interesting. Uh, now I know that I'm going to use uh, 32. I can take this with me, right, and just find screws that match this thread pitch, or I can take the thread with the 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 screw with me. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to do both. So I need to get a. I need to get three of these that are going to be flat headed like that. And I need to get them at about three fourths of an inch in length. And the length of this right now, uh, we use This is 0.485 inches. So we're going to need to get to 0.75 inches in length. And that's going to give us enough space to like screw the um, quarter inch plywood onto there to make a base. So we're going to get quarter inch length of that. All right. And uh, so we're going to go do a little shopping. I like the way you can just turn it off and snap we're back and there's plywood right there ready for us to work on all right Kind of like on the fence. I think I should get both of these. The time it takes to come back. You know, it's just not worth it. Either way, um, let's bring it back. Keep the receipt. Change of plans. Before we go shopping, I'm going to try to glue this together so that way by the time we come back we can just continue working. And uh, so I need to, I'm going to cut this right here. I'm going to do a little extra so that way when I line it up I don't have to be worried about it being precise and then I'll just shave it off so that way it'll end up being exactly the same. Um, it's a technique you use when you woodwork so that way you never end up trying to like, you know, you want to make it bigger than cut down to your uh, at the right size whenever you have multiple pieces you're gluing together. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and cut that part. and. Uh, 
We'll take you over to the other saw over here. I'm gonna glue these two together. Uh, this is in Type Bond 3. And um, I've got this elevated here with these underneath because I'm going to, um, I'm gonna need to um, I'll just kind of clamp it down. And uh, that's the best way to do it. So that way when the glue squeezes out it doesn't end up on the actual table itself and then you have your piece glued to the table. It's oh so not that much fun. Yeah, so here we go. Oops. So I usually try to keep the bulk of the glue in the middle because as you clamp and squeeze it will uh, push out. I have my bucket of hot water with a rag down there. So, you know, I'm gonna try something new. What if I build some space in between that? So, I don't know, just experimenting, problem solving. Alright, um, now we need to go ahead and clamp this thing down, so we're going to over some more. Took a couple C clamps on this just to keep it leveled and then we'll squeeze inwards. Yeah? Boy, clamping is so much fun. Let me know how much you like watching me clamp. Oh, the struggle is real. But this is real time, remember? Real time. Real time. Not half time, but real time. So who did you think would have won the Super Bowl? Who did you guess for? That's what I wanted. I didn't really watch it, so. but I know some of you did. I'm sure I was pretty excited. So this isn't like a, a finished product, finished piece, so I'm not going to get too crazy about the, um, actually, you know what? Yeah, I think I'm, <laughs> I can't even, I can't even help it. Yeah, I'm going to be a little particular. I don't like to, uh, just crush things. And, uh, you know, you tend to just develop that habit over years. stuff for the head, you know, so. I get into this good habit of just uh, constantly uh, protecting the piece. This isn't a display piece, but you know what? It's uh, it's kind of like writing. Why use really strange, simple sentence structure if you're trying to constantly improve your writing, you know? Like LOLs and BRBs or incomplete sentences or not using paragraphs when you text someone. You're not going to get any better as a writer if you don't practice all the time. So once you get good at something, you don't want to undo your work. Like bad habits. So that's why I'm putting these pieces on the side. I could have prepared all this <laughs> off camera, but whatever. Yeah, this makes for a shorter video. 
But I like hanging out with you. I like doing stuff with you. So, thanks for hanging out. Yeah? clamps as I needed them, you know, and uh, these are the better ones. Um, when you shop at the same large box retailer, you can, over many years, you can see how their quality kind of decays. They're trying to improve profit. So they'll start carrying products that are not that good of quality. And that's what happened to these. Kind of just got a lot less. The metal just got cheaper. Um, pulled in. I feel fairly good about the pressure so that way what will happen is uh, we'll get a really nice compression and uh, it'll glow up really really well. All right so let that sit for a little bit and then we'll come back. Plant them look pretty successful and I think to work with. Ugh. Yeah. So now American football season's over. What are you going to do with your lives, people? What's next? Basketball? Yeah. Any soccer fans out there? really well that little gap in between looks like it uh, gave me a chance to push this down so the wood itself it's not super flat thought it would get a little flatter there's a little bit of a ridge right here um, not the end of the world but again it doesn't have to be because it's not, it's not a finished piece um, what I do want to do uh, let's get rid of this gone, I'm going to um, be able to cut this a little bit even. I'll drill out the... I'll cut this, make it even on the ends, and then I'll drill out the uh, sides right there. I 
And now that's flat on both sides. This diameter is two and three fourths of an inch. Here's what we want. Now, the thing about these hole saw things is that you can buy these, but you need to have this also purchased. And this screws into the dr dr drill shank, and uh, it's a quarter inch. But you see those little two holes there? That's what holds on to that, so that way it doesn't slide. So you need to loosen this up like that to get that off. So you loosen that up, and then you turn this off. You put that in, and then this, sorry, okay, I'm turn this down into there, and then, so I'm just trying to line that, those two holes up. And there you go. And now they're locked into place. And then this will drill the hole. And as this drill the hole, this will cut out the diameter I want. Now, so I need to go just a little bit out, like that. So that way when I um, cut this back, slide it. I need just to be a little bit out the router a little bit because I need to like press the wood against it to you'll see because I need to like create some tension um, like that so I'm gonna drill cut that out it's a little bit out you know circle I'll cut down that way and we'll go from there we have a nice alignment. I have a nice spot I want for this, just enough that that's going to protrude. If I fail, cut it down on this side. I can always try it again on that side. So I'm not too, too worried about it being perfect. I'm just going to do a little, just a little line like that around it. Just give me, a, just give me an idea of what's happening. Okay. So something like that. All right. I think the best way for me to approach this is probably going to use my drill press. Um, yeah, I think that's the best way to go. You know all this breaking of the fourth wall that I'm doing? It's like I'm getting a license to be insane talking to myself. That's what it sounds like to me, to be honest with you. Anyway, talking to you, so I must be talking to myself because no one else is here. Go team crazy. All right. Sounds worse than it looks. Calm down, people. Almost there. Almost there. Oops, nice job. Get up a little bit on this table. 
table. There's nothing better than a fresh, brand new saw bit. I think just cut through that thing like it was butter. All right, and that's that. I'm gonna cut down now so we can slide that in. I'm gonna mark this just to help me stay on a nice line. I'm just going to the very furthest part of the uh, circle right here because I need to cut that way into it. And I'm going to use my jigsaw for that. It might not be the best saw actually now I think about it. You know what? Table saw would be better. Yeah, let's table saw this. So I lied. I thought I was going to use the table saw, then I thought about it. The saw can go up, but so high. Um, by the time the blade touches, I don't want to like cut back there, you know? I want to just keep this as circle as intact as much as possible. So I don't think the table saw would have been... Table saw would be fine, but I don't want to do it with the table saw. I think I can get a better job done with a different tool. What would be perfect for this is a band saw that's like um, a static one. You know, I don't know why I said static. <laughs> the the uh, active bandsaw. I don't know what that would look like. But um, I think a bandsaw would be the best thing for this because it just cuts up and down. Uh, so my next best thing is this uh, jigsaw. So let's go ahead and use this jigsaw and see if I can get this done. ladies and gentlemen. So I think that's it. Um, so it's a little bit better. Okay. All right. So now's the moment of reckoning. Let's see if that thing will slide in there. That thing being the router. What do you think people? It's going to work? <laughs> yeah, it does. Surely does work. Alright. So, go like that. Twist that there. Okay, not bad. I think I can probably have made this protrude a little bit more, but I think that's good enough for now. Um, yeah, I don't like how much I took off with the bandsaw. But if I don't like it, I'll just drill out that side again and give it a shot again to see what I can do. If it doesn't feel like stable enough. I'm going to set up the cut diameter, I mean cuts, cut width I need for the um, quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. And to do that, it has to be the same as this. So to do, to get the height, I mean the, uh, the width right, all I do is I use the piece itself and then I slide it over until it touches and then that's it. So that's going to be the width of the cut and the height, the blade doesn't have to be too high because the, uh, the wood I'm going to cut is pretty low so I can do that.
To make this cut safe, I need to clamp pieces of wood down around this. So uh, what I'll do, I'll take this long piece here, and I slide it back over here so that as it feeds out, it has something to push down against. That way it doesn't flip up. So it keeps it from, I'm trying to minimize kickback and binding by, uh, by doing this. You can see it just pushes down and keeps the piece in a nice safe orientation. And then we'll start off with our hand, but then we'll put this in as we get a little bit further. All right, so it's gonna get noisy, people. Noise pollution. Noise pollution. Here we go. We're getting there, people. We're getting there. All right. Now I want to. I gotta have this cut. I need to. I'm gonna drill into there, and I need to see how much of this to cut off. So, right there. I'm gonna cut a little extra because it's gonna bend a little bit. And, uh, yeah. Let's do it. The router has these little grooves that stick out right here. And I think that that's a great place to have it sit back here on, like that. So it, so it touches that, like that. Um, so you can see that. And what that does, this gives me access to the depth guide right here in the front. And uh, the power switch will be to the left. I want to do a, a, a pilot hole here, and to do that, it's going to mark the center, and I'm going to just, just drill a relief hole so that way when I drill, it shouldn't split the wood. Let's get the center of this. Um, let's see what we're working with. Uh, we are like right over here a little. Oh, did you see me do that? Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, you did. Okay. So, but just let me see one more time. All right, so that gave me that line while wow, a pencil point has just broken off. It gives me that line. I'm gonna go a little bit below it, like that much, right? And then I need to figure out the center. From there to from there to there to there to there. Okay, so what do we have here? Eight, nine, five, six. So 
let's uh we want to go this is one in one two three four five six sixteenths so we need to do on this side twelve sixteenths so Well, sixteen, so like that. And then we go like this. Okay. So let's check the depth of this. This is one and a half, so one and eight sixteenths. So we want to go, um, yeah, twelve sixteenths again. Perfect. All right. Going to be my center right there. And I'm going to do take the drill, the sacrificial piece of wood here. Put your glasses on. I predict I'm going to need to charge those batteries a little bit more. I'm going to place the first screw into the uh, this top part here. And the reason why I do it this way is I can um, I can easily just fold it over. Let's get it started. This is a number four Phillips. So as I get it started, what will happen is line up the hole. So I don't have it too, too tight because I want to be able to like um, I want to back it up just a little more. So I'm gonna put the router in here and then I'm gonna squeeze it down the other side. I don't know how easy this is gonna be. It's kind of high, um, but I want to go like this. Oops. I see what's happening. All right, I really have to like actually take that off so it doesn't really spin out of the way. All right, no problem. We're learning. Okay, that's out of the way. Put this in like that. Bring that over like this. Put that forward. Okay, okay we're almost there, people. Right, so those grooves are lined up. I need to now drill start a hole there so the pressure of this overlapping is what's going to give us the um oops put your glasses that's what's going to give us the tension to keep the uh, router from spinning around and staying in the same spot. Um, yep, so we'll use this flathead screw. I so seldom use the flatheads. I feel awkward. Goes well, this should go in quite easily. Famous last words. 
I'll leg it. If everything goes well. So is a winner, Houston. All right, so that's the. F Let's go back to the Phillips side. Oh boy! I thought that was going to be a little less <laughs> likely to break, but that thing is going to break. Um. You know what I'm going to have to do? Yeah, I'm going to have to try to like... Well, you saw it happen. I'm gonna, it does fit in there really nicely, uh, but that's splitting. I'm going to try that again. I have to use a little less, uh, little less force. You know what? I think it's fine. It's plywood. It's lots of layers. That's what's called plywood. Oh, the top one cracked. It looks like there was a... Three more cracks to go, if possible. Uh, I noticed that this is sitting up a little high, so I'm just going to push this down. There you go. Now it's bumped up against uh, the lip, so it shouldn't actually move at all. Um, it does feel really sturdy in here. Depth gauge. That needs a little lubrication. Um, yeah. All right. I like it. We are in the home stretch. i got to build the top now. I have no idea the size to make the top. I'm just kind of guessing, see what feels good. Uh, looks like a 14 by 14 would be a nice large surface. I don't know if it would be too much. I think maybe 12 by 12 might be also good. Um, hmm. Let's do 14 by 14. Yeah, so we go 14 over. Feels a little large, but uh, we'll find out when we use it, right? So that's, that's a good start. So what I'll do is I'll rip that off, and then just get a visual of what 14 would look like. Uh, Yeah, this is big enough because it's going to be in the middle. Yeah, I think this is good. 14 by 14 is the size we are going with, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, throw it in the table saw, on the table saw, in the table saw. Who knows what's the right way to position that in space with words.
with this cut, we want to measure the... Uh, let me get the center of that. I'm going to try a couple different things here. This is a little short of 14, uh, so it is actually pretty good. Um, we can just mark it off at, at 7 then, so this would be 7 here. And then on this side... Let's mark this off at 7 also. Alright, so now that's marked off. Cut a, cut a line across all this here. Like that. Just this here, like that. Okay, that's the center. Now, with that being the center, I want to go ahead and use the actual top of the um, router top to, uh, to uh, measure the rest of it. So let's go ahead and pull that off. And try not to lose any screws. That as the center. Okay. So those are all my holes I need to drill out. I forgot one. <laughs> Good job. Why didn't you tell me I forgot one, people? Come on. I'm looking for you to help me out. Right, so. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm drill all those holes. And uh, to do that, I want to do... Relief, relief holds underneath like that. Let's start there. I think this is probably the most prepared I've ever been for one shot. Let's see if I get it right. Okay, we have ourselves a micrometer here because I'm going to measure this to see. Okay, that's 1.57 inches or 3.99 millimeters. Okay, I need to make a hole that big. 3.99 millimeters. Now, one of these should 1.54, 3.92. Okay. Four point three two, okay, millimeters. One point seven. One point seven inches. What do we have for this here? One point five seven inches. Looks like we get a big jump when we go from here to here. Let me, let me try this again. Ah, 1.59. Yeah, it's a little too too small by a little bit. Um, I think I need to 
Yeah, I think I'm going to need to settle with uh, that size. Now, let me check and see if I have anything in, in between. I don't really think so, but I'll check. I think that's it. We're going to use it. Uh, 530 seconds. I thought I was going to try to find something else in between, but there is no in between. It's 5 seconds. I probably should do a pilot hole, I think. Start with a smaller one. Uh, yeah, start off with a smaller hole. So that can be prevented if this was a solid piece of wood that would have uh, stopped it from, um, you know, <laughs> looks like it drilled a little too far. Anyway, okay, that would have stopped the breakthrough, but I wasn't, like again, this is not a show piece. Let's make sure this can fit in here. Yeah, all right, it's a little tight fit. Um, let's put this back on top. So we got, yeah, those holes definitely line up. This one's a little tight. Okay. I'm going to um, create a little countersink for this uh, to do that. I need to use this here so that way. I'm going to put the uh, screw in it and sit flush with that. enough of an offset so when you screw it down it should be flush. Um, you don't want to go too too much because what will happen over time it'll just kind of compress down into the wood in that way. You, um, you'll actually have some something to work with. Okay, so that's that. Um, uh, we have to drill through the center here so that center big. Yes it is. All right. So we want to Drill that out. 
to do that. Let's see what makes sense. Um, that's pretty wide. You know what? No need to do that. Just go like that. Nope. So that is uh, okay, whatever. One and three sixteenths. Yeah, perfect. What? That's exactly what this is. Okay. So we have one and three sixteenths like that. And drill that out. I don't know if it's possible, but we can use the no. All right. So we're gonna have to do this by hand. I'm actually going to uh, put a solid piece of wood here so that way we don't have too much breakthrough. It's a little pain in the butt. Just so you can see what I've done. Um, we made this flat part here. So I can put this like that. So when I break when it breaks through, it will uh, take the bottom piece of the wood with it. Um, probably would be wise to clamp this down just to make my life a little easier. Um, Should be the top, and uh, all right, let's give it a try. I need to put this base back on with some of those screws, and uh, what I've noticed uh, would be a good idea. So I just want to hold the base in place, right? And I'm going to use two screws for that. So we'll do two short ones. Do this on this side, one on this side, and we'll do another one. Actually, no, let's do the other weird long one right here. That doesn't make sense, sorry. Here. <coughs> no, that's not where the weird long one goes. So the weird long one goes there. We will then place the short, another short, short one over here. Right? And I'm thinking, <coughs> what we'll do now is take the, okay, so I'll kind of mark it for us. What's going on? We want this, this, and this. That's what we want. All right. So what we have is the uh, three-fourths inch. We're going to use that to. I think that one's going to be uh, too much damage. Let me just see, because in case I have to return it, you know. Um, 
but I looked at it from the side, it looked like it was the right size to use. Um, getting it lined up now, let's see how well that goes. Is that working? Oh, it's actually working. I mean, it just screwed through, it didn't get to the... Alright, I see there's an issue here, people. All right. um, it doesn't look like this is long enough to go past this and go into there. Alright, um, wow, that's good to know. Yeah. That will not work. The only way to round that is to make the countersink a little deeper. Um, I'm going to go to the one inch and see if the, uh, we have more luck with the one inch. All right, so here is the one inch. That does look like, well, that's going to get to it. Let's make sure that that actually does screw into there without th yeah okay those those definitely match I need like a flashlight I can't see anything back to this. Go back to the three-fourths entrance where we got. One must be a healthy skeptic in life. Get stuff done. Never trust yourself all the way, you know. goes in there right that's it just barely touching it right there before it even starts to screw down that's it. and then what we have over here is let me look at these one inch We should have done this in the first place. So it makes sense. Okay. That's it. Bottom it out. See that? Yeah. So it doesn't go too too far down. I think my best bet is to stick with the uh, three fourths inch and uh, do the countersink a little bit more. That way, when I do, when I do get 
a little further down. Let's see, guys can see how much more I want to countersink. Let's see. So, I don't want to go too, too far with the countersink. All right, just a little bit more. Yeah, all right, that's the answer. I'm gonna just kind of sink those a little bit more. I think that should be enough. Let's back this up a little. Take a look at this. Let's see what we get. Alright, so we have three fourths inch. Oh. Might want to take that out there, right? Perfect. We got ourselves a biter. Okay. Now we need to. I really wish I had my headlamp with me. So I can't see anything where the holes are. You know what? I need to, uh, I gotta get these screws through this hole. It's a little, a little better. So what happens is... That's what happens. all the way through. And then ah. <laughs> of course that's not gonna work. So that's on top of it. Duh. Alright. Uh, let me just uh, alright, there you go. Man Just so smart, you trick yourself into failure. Okay, here you go. One, two, three. I can do this. All right. Great people. Ha! 
Ah, perfect. All right, there you go. So we have ourselves exactly what we want. So we can just go ahead and route the top of things like that. Sweet. So I had to rebuild this entire top. Um, this is why uh, this diameter was too small in the middle. So one and three eighths is exactly what you want for this, and that way you can get like larger bits like that through. Because um, you got to remember, it's not like super perfect, so you need a little bit of room for uh, error. So one and three eighths is what I had to end up using. Um, so let's see if we can. Uh, get these screws in now. That's truly the question. Hmm. It's like a bit of an improvement because you can see when I first did it I drilled too many holes, unnecessary holes. So. Beautiful. Alright. So let's tighten this up. And voila, there you have it. That would be a nice solid base for anything. And you know, if I wanna if I feel like it's gonna be more permanent, right? I don't wanna move this around and I wanna add more stability to this. I still have these holes right here I can drill out and do the same thing too. But for now, I'm gonna leave it like that, and uh, I guess we need to do a test, don't we? We probably wanna see it in action. So here's the scenario. I am, um, it's all set up now, right? I have this piece right here. If you've ever seen my uh, wobbly handstand trainer video, on how to make it, um, actually I'll, I'll have it displayed right now, right here, a little section of it so you can see. Um, in that video, this is one of the bases for the wobbly handstand trainer. And I need to round off the sides. But the problem is, it's small enough now that if I put a router on it, I have to be so careful not to like mess up the ends. So what I did, right, I took this just to match the curve. What I did, I took the curve right here, slid it in, and I adjust the height of the... Um, router bit so it, it matches the right uh, angle curvature and let's say now this is my base right but what if I wanted to do something nice and curve these these um, this side right here you know like this it's gonna be a little hard to do with a router so let's see if I can do it with that right okay here we go
Wow, that's amazing. All right, as you can tell, see that? That would not be able, I would not be able to do that with a handheld router. So this bench top router table is amazing. I love it. I hope you did too. All right, hey, listen, um, that was a lot of fun to make. Maybe you want to see my money maker. All right, send you off with my money maker. I hope you had a good time. That was a lot of fun to make. Um, I hope it helps you and your woodworking projects. That's a really cool, simple project. It's take like an hour, maybe at most, to make. Um, really useful for you if you ever have to route small, small pieces. And they're um, bench uh, and your hand hell router is just a little too uh, big. Obviously, you can just buy a bench. You can just buy a router table and just do that yourself. But this is a nice cheap way. And what you can do, you can have get a multiple set of routers like this and um, you know a Dewalt and Porter Cable. They're pretty much the same company. Um, I mean, well, you know, Dual owns Porter Cable, but I think that's the way. I could be wrong, but anyway, uh, you can correct me. Uh, but either or, they are owned by the same, and uh, the routers have the same dimension in the middle. So, if you get either or, and I'll put a link to it so you can see like what what the what the model numbers would be that you can use for this. Um, again, you can have a whole bunch of these set up, and then if you have a a lot of different cuts that you need to make that you don't want to keep on adjusting. You just go ahead and use this multiple times. Um, so I'm going to get myself another router like this. I can have another one set up so I can have opportunity to like do multiple cuts. And that way I don't have to adjust the height or do anything scary and mess up the piece with my hand because, you know, it's unstable. So um, anyway, hey, listen, thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you like, don't forget to make a comment below, tell me something that you felt I could have done better uh, so help me learn, help you learn, help everybody else that learns or wants to read about who will read the comments about this. Um, subscribe, it really helps the channel out. Um, I definitely would love to get your uh, subscription so please do that and uh, go ahead and share it also with your um, community and let other people know that you know you saw something great, really awesome video on how to um, create a uh, tabletop um, router tabletop. Well, I don't even know how to say it, but you get the point. All right, just so go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, please. And uh, it helps the comments help the algorithm. And if you really want to help me out, I have an Amazon wish list. You can go ahead and uh, get me something from there, or just you know, send me something that you already have that you don't need anymore. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Don't forget to look for me on Facebook dot com slash motion design studio instagram dot com slash motion design studio and youtube dot com slash motion design studio thanks a lot